Wow. Good evening. We are back in Cardiff. If you've watched our last few vlogs, we uh, went to Cardiff Castle earlier today and then we went out to Castel Koch later in the afternoon. And now we are back at Cardiff Castle to go on a Dark Wales ghost tour of the castle. We're currently in Butte Park, which is just outside the castle, waiting for the tour to start. For another hour. Yeah. Lydia is cold. I'm freezing. It's going to be very cold tonight. Um, I'm hoping maybe I'll just acclimate and it'll be fine. <laughs> we'll Probably <see>. not. We are here at Cardiff Castle now. The tour is going to start any minute. We can't film while they're telling stories, but we might be able to get some footage in the interim bits. Who knows? We'll keep you posted. We'll tell you all about it when it's over. That is the ghost tour done. It was phenomenal. Uh, we want to give you guys a more in-depth rundown of it when we get back to our hotel room where it's a little bit quieter and not so cold. But to start, it was amazing. Highly recommend. 1010, worth it. Okay, we are finally back to our room. It is well after midnight. We're gonna give you the quickest rundown of this tour that we can. The way that it kind of works is, is the small group that you're with gets led through the castle. You're the only ones there. You get to go in all these different rooms, but it is like a lights out kind of tour. So you have a flashlight, you can use that to get in between rooms, and then when you get in... Which they provided if you didn't have it. Yes, uh, once you get into the rooms, all the lights, like it's already dark in there. There aren't any lights on. Everybody shuts off their flashlights and then you get to listen to the stories. One of my favorite things about this was that we were able to go to the castle at night. 
it was a small group. There was maybe 12 of us, and it was just much more personal in a way, more unique, definitely more unique because you're not there's not tons of people around running around kids and all this stuff. It's just you. It's quiet. Mm-hmm. And with it being dark, like I said, it's just a completely different way to see the castle. Especially for us, since we were there earlier that day. We'd just seen it. It's fresh on our memories. We go into these rooms that are now pitch dark and we know what it looks like. But it looks a little different because it's dark. And the other thing that's interesting about the rooms being dark, once the stories are done, you have a few minutes to click on your flashlight and inspect the room at your leisure before we go into the next one. And having such a small pinpoint of light to go around the room with, it forces you to look at everything in a much smaller scope. And then you start noticing tons and tons of details. Like we saw so many things on this tour that we completely missed hours earlier in the day which brings us to my next point which was there were things that these tour guides pointed out that our other tour guides did not point out it's not that they didn't know it's that these guys are going to point out the things that probably most tourism companies don't want you to know so the more grim history Mm -hmm. one of the things they told us is one of the marquis's brothers was supposed to inherit everything but right before his older brother died he had a son and then everything was supposed to go to the son his brother was very upset told everyone that he hopes the son dies this is a baby he has six months six month year old hopes that he dies so he can get what he wants what is rightfully his Mm -hmm. according to him and then refused to leave the castle yeah refused and had to be apparently drug out that's not something that you're going to hear (laughs) on a regular tour Another thing that they told us was the... Are you talking about all the paranormal stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the third Marquess was very interested in the paranormal, what happens after you die. Um, He he joined a society that was really kind of like the scientific paranormal investigation. They were trying to really scientifically prove Prove that it's true. And so he held tons of experiments in the summer smoking room at the top of the clock tower constantly trying to figure out what happens after we die is there something after how can we prove it what kind of experiments can we run to prove those things we didn't learn about any of that no on the day tour at all none of it they also take you into rooms that we didn't get to go into granted we weren't at the castle on the weekend so there wasn't the option to take the tour into the tower like we did Mm -hmm. tonight so maybe we would have if we got that tour but we didn't have the chance to because we weren't going to be here this weekend. So we were, we got very lucky to get into the tower, mm-hmm. period, because the only reason we got into the tower is because we were part of the ghost tour. All of the tour, like the whole thing, from what we saw to what we heard to the two tour guides that we had was phenomenal. They were wonderful. It was a wonderful tour. I, I cannot say anything bad about the tour itself. And they were friendly. They, and were, they answered all of our questions. And, and there's something about a guy who has got a cool like Welsh accent telling you ghost stories in a great. Welsh castle that you're like, this is the best. <laughs> However, we're going to take two minutes to complain just a little bit and to also ask you, please, don't, don't be, be these, these people. people. Person number one, you don't want to be on a tour, any type of tour, especially a ghost tour. We had one guy who was constantly interrupting our tour guide. The minute the tour guide would say, somebody, a lot of times people see somebody in this corner and he has a beard. This guy would immediately interrupt and go, I see him. He's got a beard. He's in that corner. And all of us knew that he was probably just doing it to kind of, you know, get attention, I guess. But it would interrupt our tour guide. He would lose his place. Everyone got a little flustered. And it just kind of ruined some of the momentum that the guy's stories telling had. So just don't be that guy. Don't be the guy that constantly interrupts and says that he sees everything when he probably doesn't. And that's unfair. I I don't know what he saw. I mean, if you see it, follow the guide's advice and tell them as they asked, which was after the storytelling was done or while we were moving from room to room. Right. But don't be the guy who's just constantly interrupting the tour guide. He also did something else that was very, very frustrating for everybody in the group. He was trying to scare 
uh, the guy that was his friend that was with him, he kept accidentally, I don't think it was by accident at all, scaring other people in the group. He would literally jump out behind things to try to scare his father and scare instead a young woman in the group who would get very scared of this very large man jumping out from, mm-hmm. and then apologize profusely and say, oh, I thought it was my dad. Don't be that guy. Don't be the people that are going to try to scare people on a ghost tour. If it's a good ghost tour and it's in the right setting and you've got the right tour guides, it's scary enough. Yeah, and it was. The second person you don't want to be is the person who constantly wanders off in the middle of the tour, who then the tour guides have to go find and bring back to the group. Which interrupts the tour again. (laughs) Yes, we had one person who consistently would just open random doors and wander away and then of course the tour guides are thinking is the door opening by itself and there was like a moment of excitement and then realizing oh no it's just a person walking into places that we're not supposed to be be respectful of the place that you're in this is a castle full of antique furniture and furnishings from the family from the 17 and 1800s and they've asked you not to touch them and not to go into certain places. And then yet here is this person who just... And even in one room, in the dark, in full pitch dark, is wandering off into other rooms. There are spiral staircases that drop out of nowhere in this castle. Like, be cautious. Don't be these people. Back to the good stuff. The tour was amazing. I would highly recommend it. We'll link it below. It was £18.50 a person. Go for it. Do it. It was worth it. It was wonderful. They're also very um, conscientious of that people might get uncomfortable, that you might get really scared. And if you want to wait outside of a room, that's why there's two guides so that somebody can escort you out and hang out with you in the hallway, in the light. If you choose to go on this ghost tour, we highly, highly recommend that you go to the castle If you can, same day during the daytime. It makes for a long day. It does, but it's worth it. But it's worth it. Because these rooms are so opulent. None of our photographs from the previous vlog of during the day or our very, very crummy photos from tonight, none of them do the rooms justice. In the daylight, they just shine. And you can't get that from your flashlight in the dark. There's so much that you can't see during the day that you're going to get on the dark whales tour and vice versa so much that you can't see at night when you get to go during the day so highly recommend doing both if you can put them on the same day it was phenomenal we didn't see any ghosts while we were there i at least had one moment where i constantly felt like somebody was watching me from the open doorway that we had just come through that was very uncomfortable of course there wasn't anybody there but then come to find out at the end of that talk in the room that we were in all of the sightings of a ghost in that room start in that doorway and they walk through the room and then out where a fireplace was random history fact the second marquess died in the house Mm. they were having a, a dinner party and he stood up in the dining room and abruptly left the table and went into his private quarters which was through the library and then into his private quarters the guests wondered if they defended him uh, his wife said oh i'm sure everything is fine i'll just go check on him by the time that she got in there he was dead moments later floor. i mean like moments Mo- I could, couldn't have been 30 seconds so um in the library there's now a fireplace that was not there when he died that used to be the doorway into his private quarters and the ghostly sightings of him come out through the dining hall through the library and then he disappears into the fireplace which would have been the doorway into his private quarters so it was an interesting moment to have felt the entire time like somebody was watching me from that doorway and then find out that's where the ghost comes through it was fun it was was really fun fun. it was highly recommend it go do it it's worth being up at one o'clock in the morning when we have to get up at six in the morning. So like, is great. Go do it. Do us a huge favor. Uh, like this video, comment. And if you want to see more videos that we're doing here in Wales, subscribe. If you believe in ghosts, comment below. Lydia would love to hear about it. If you've ever had a ghostly encounter, I would love to hear your story. <laughs> <laughs>